And we're back from the summer break with more Rust tutorials. Today we're going to look at error handling. Number one, via panic, and number two, via the result enum. While the first one is a very straightforward and quite crude approach to just stop execution of your program whenever things go south, the second one is probably the most important enum that you can ever find in Rust. It gives you a very nuanced way to deal with your errors, and it also allows you to force users of your code to deal with any error scenarios that might pop up. My name is Max, this is Green Tea Coding. Let's learn a number of ways to deal with errors in Rust. Let us start first with introducing how Panic works. As always, all the examples that I use in this code here are merely for didactic purposes and probably lack every sense of usability in the real world. But hey, it's just a tutorial. We'll start with a function that can panic. So we'll call it function that panics. And we'll take in an input value, let's say a number, which is a u8. And the only thing that we want to do in here is decide whether this number is too large, then we'll panic, or whether it is OK, it's small enough, then we'll just print it to the screen. So if number is greater than 5, we will panic. And panic is a macro, therefore it has the exclamation mark. And now we can just input some text that we want to have displayed whenever the program panics. So let's put in, I can't handle numbers that large. Otherwise, we'll just print a normal statement. This number is OK. Very straightforward. And of course, we have to use this function. We'll say function that panics with the number 3, and that should be quite OK. And then we'll use that again with number 10, and this should panic. Once we run this, we'll see that number one, we don't need the parenthesis around here. That's nice. And then we'll see at first we have this number is okay. That was for the number three. And then the main thread panicked at I can't handle numbers that large. So this is a very crude way, as I said in the intro, to just stop the execution of your program altogether. And typically this is used when you approach an error scenario that you cannot ever recover from. For example, if you would like to allocate memory for a variable that you need to have, but the RAM is already full, or you have a stack overflow or something like this. In these cases, it absolutely makes sense to panic, and no computer program ever would probably continue running once it cannot allocate memory anymore. However, this is not the way you want to deal with 99% of your error scenarios, because most of the time you can find some way to work around an error scenario. You can recover in some way, shape or form. And for that, we'll have the so-called result enum. So we'll make a function, function that returns a result. And we'll again take in a number, which is a u8. And what I want to do in this function is I just want to double the input number. However, as you can probably guess, u8, an unsigned 8-bit integer, has a very constrained range in which it can hold numbers, actually only up to a number of 255. Therefore, doubling any number that is more than half of 255 will result in an overflow of this number, which I want to avoid in this case. So. I actually want to return the double of the input value, but only if it is less than half of 255. So what I can do here is return a result variable. And you can see already it has two template parameters or generics or whatever you want to call it. The first one is the type you want to return in case of your happy path, which is going to be a U8. And the second one is the type of the error you want to return in case something goes wrong. So an error has to be displayable in some way, and otherwise there is no real constraints what your error type could be. So in this case, I want to decide that my error is going to be a string. OK, 
the only thing that I need to do now is check whether number is greater than the U8 max divided by two. And if this is the case, I know that we would have an overflow. So I want to return an error. And we said that our error is going to be a string. So we can say something like this number would overflow if doubled. And I'm going to do into in here and we'll get a string. However, in our happy path, we want to return the double. So we return an OK. And then we'll just take num times two. And this is already the finished function. So let's uncomment those function calls here and see how we can now unpack the, the result that we get back. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to print a nice sentence, five times two equals, and here I want to have my result. And I know five can easily be doubled within the range of an unsigned 8-bit integer. So we'll have function that returns a result with five. However, what you can see now that Russ is not happy with me because what we get back here is a result rather than a number. So I have to somehow unpack that result to get to the number. And one of the easiest and most straightforward ways to do this is just call dot unwrap. What unwrap will do is in case everything went okay, we will just get the result that is contained in our case 10. However, if result contains an error, then we will panic. So let's see this in action. 5 times 2 equals 10. However, when I say 150, we know that this should not be possible and we will panic right now. So let's run it. And as you see, we get our panic. Thread main panicked at result unwrap on an error value. This number would overflow if doubled. And this is exactly the error string that we return from our function. We now have a second way of doing this, or a very similar way of doing this. We can, instead of unwrap, use expect. What expect will do is very similar to unwrap. If you get an OK value, it will just unpack that value, and you can use it. However, if you have an error value, it will also panic, but you can give a custom message with your panic. Okay. For example, here, what we could do is say, function panic at 150. Let's run that again. And we will now see that our error message has become a little more customized. Thread main panicked at function panic at 150. And on top of that, we still get the error message from our function. This number will overflow if doubled. While this approach is now a bit more sophisticated than the function that panics right away, we still haven't gained any ground here. In case we have an error, we still panic and the program holds execution. So we need to find a better way to do this. And this is where the fact that result is actually an enum really comes to shine. As you can see here on doc.rustlang.org, result is defined as an enum over two types, t and e, where t is the type of your happy path result that you want to transmit, and E is the type of an error. And it has two variants, an OK variant that contains a variable of type T, and an error variant that contains a error type E. So of course, what you can do with a result that is an enum is you can match on it. So let's try that. We will say let double of num is equal to match function that returns the result of our number. And for now, we're going to go the happy path. So we'll just put in 50. Of course, match has to be exhaustive. So we need to cover both our variants. The first one is going to be the OK. And we get our return value in here. And we'll just forward this to double of num. In the second case, we have the error with the error message E contained. And now we're absolutely free to do whatever. For example, we could just say, OK, in case double of the number was not a valid thing to do, we'll just 
assign the original number. Or we can just print something to the screen. Or we could call the function with a lower number, whatever we desire. In this case, I decided to just print out the error. There was an error. And we'll have our error in here. Then we'll again print line and say defaulting to original number. And of course, this was our number 50. Now, to give us some output in the end, we'll say the resulting number is, and we'll put double of num here. Let's try this out. So if we put in 50, the resulting number is 100. And if we put in 150, Then we'll see there was an error. This number would overflow if doubled. You can see this is the error string that we return. So we're defaulting to the original number and the resulting number is 150. Working as expected. Now you can see that having this match statement, even though it only has two arms, it's quite a lot of code that we have to type. So let's make this a bit shorter. We'll have the if let condition. So if let OK, double of num equals function that returns result, which is also some kind of pattern matching, meaning that if this function returns an OK, then use this double of num as the value. So in the happy path, we can directly output our number here. And then we will need our else branch. However, this time we don't have access to our error message. So we will just say something like this. Could not double number. So let's see if this works. Let's check our heavy path first. The resulting number is 100. Great. And the path in which we get an error could not double number. So these were a few basic ways to deal with a result that you get back from a function. There is a huge amount of other ways you can deal with these, for example, in a functional style. However, I'm not going to go into all of this because this would really take hours and hours. But here you have at least the basics you need to understand when working with result. As you can see, the strength of this approach when using result is in the fact that the result is an enum. So therefore you have to match all of the cases, the OK case and the error case. So you cannot really neglect any errors. And number two, because your data that the user wants to have is stored in the OK variant, the user cannot even get to the data without thinking about how to treat errors. If you want to introduce some custom errors, I highly recommend to you the this error crate. So if you go to crates.io, where all of the Rust crates are stored, you can just search for this error, and you will see that it has currently the version 1.0.48. So what you need to do in order to import this crate, you will just go into your cargo.toml file and write this error equals and then whatever version you want. I chose to use the most recent version. And now in your code, you just type use this error. And from now on, you can use this crate and Cargo will automatically compile it into your executable. In order to showcase this crate a bit, I created a setup, which you might envision in kind of an embedded device that needs to regulate the flow rate for whatever. And I want to have a function that sets the flow rate, takes in a 64-bit float, and it returns back a result with either the unit type, indicating that everything went OK, but there is no real data to return to you, or an error. And in order to be very specific and have type safety, I wanted to have a specific type, a custom type for this error, and I called it the quantity error. The quantity error, as you can see, is defined up here. There is a variant called too large, too small, and in case the user enters a negative flow rate, there is the negative error. Now, if you were to do this without the this error crate, your code could look something like this. 
you define your flow rate, which in this case is negative, and then you have a match on your set flow rate. If it was okay, then you just print successfully set the flow rate or do whatever you need to do in this program. However, if you have an error, you want to show to the user what went wrong. So again, here I have to match on this error that comes back. And if it's too large, I'll write flow rate too large. The same thing with too small or negative. However, if you need to process this error at multiple points in your program, you would somehow have to track that all of these messages are always the same. Otherwise, the user might get confused. An easier way to do this is the this error crate. With the this error crate, you can define some macros. In this case, they are always above your variant in the enum. And you will have this hashtag, then you'll have the square brackets, and you'll have error. And inside the parents of error, you can define your error message, which would be flow rate too large, flow rate too small, and flow rate cannot be negative in this case. And therefore, you can have a much better solution where you just match on set flow rate again. The happy path did not change, but if you have an error, you could just say print could not set flow rate reason. And then your error E not only has the correct type quantity error, which is type safe, but it also contains a displayable message for the user. As you could see, dealing with errors is everything but one dimensional. Rust gives you a plethora of options right out of the box, and I encourage you to stop by crates.io and look for crates that might fit your needs specifically when dealing with errors. If you learned a thing or two, and you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. See you next time at Green Tea Coding.